Max G yeah. over R. Then so R. Yeah. G R R plus partial R G R R. Yeah, minus partial R G R R. Seems. Yeah. And and. No, no, what is GRR? This derivative uh, do not uh, commute. When I act with this, say on uh, omega C, this is uh, not equal to zero. And the reason they do not commute is because this is really a matrix. And when you multiply two matrices, say two, two, then you know that eta, you, you know that, that if you multiply two right. matrices, it, yeah. the order is important. You cannot, it is not that like with numbers. Yeah, that's a big thing in linear algebra. Yeah, so, so you get a different one. And because these derivatives actually, because this is really a matrix in A and B, this contains a matrix. And, and that is why these two uh, do not uh, commute. And the Riemann tensor is when you have delta A, delta uh, B minus delta B times uh, delta uh, A. If you um, act that on omega C, and omega C is a vector, then this is equal to R A B C. Uh, D acting uh, on omega D. And this is the definition of the Riemann tensor. So if we act with, uh, if you have a vector field uh, like this, and we act on the derivatives in different order, then uh, the difference is given by how a, a, a tensor, Riemann tensor, how it acts on that vector field. Right. Th this is the definition of and you can actually show that this, only, this does not depend on derivatives of omega d. You could imagine more complicated uh, things. Plus, for example, I could, could have here, um, uh, I have here c um, omega d times uh, r a uh, b. And I have to close, uh, and then here I, I have a C and then a D. So I could construct something uh, like that. It would have the indices, indices, right? These are all lower, these are lower, and uh, this one's a lower with upper. But this term is not there. So what does this mean, the human tension? Intuitively, what meaning does it have? It, it, it means um, how, that's one thing we also have to do. That is if you have a curved manifold and, and you go around, you, you parallel transport a vector around it. It does not come back to itself. If, if these two derivatives commute, the, the vector would come back to itself. But, but now, uh, so, so you will have to work this out. We didn't do that yet. Oh, okay. it, it is uh, worked out in my notes. So we, we have to show that if you, so that is really what, what it means. You know, in flat space, if you parallel transport a vector, say along a curve, along a circle, you follow the tangent and you come back to the vector itself. But in, in, on a sphere, you, you do not. Right, so is this like calculating the difference between the original vector and what happened after it's parallel transported? Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and if you do, do that, uh, you, you find what enters in the equation is exactly uh, a combination which is equal to the Riemann tensor. But also that, that we have to derive. It is actually not that complicated uh, to do.
do you think we have enough time to do it today or should we save it for next time? Um, we won't have much time. Uh, it, it, it is uh, it is some work. Uh, we, we can uh, start it. And because there are a number of uh, steps uh, you, you have to understand. So, so, so what we do is, so this is my origin. And then here we have a curve. I call this x alpha as a function of tor. Tor is uh, not a time, that's a parameter of this curve. That means for each value of tor at, at a different uh, point. And what I calculate is, is, is uh, the integral uh, d tor of d, uh, d tor of v nu of x uh, at x tor. So, 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 so this is a This is what we do with parallel uh, transport. And with parallel transport, we know that uh, dd tor v mu plus gamma mu uh, rho sigma dx sigma uh, d tor times uh, v rho is equal to zero. This is uh, parallel uh, transport. Wait, this derivative is taken with respect to what? Tor. And this is uh, at least put in here. That is uh, the integral uh, which we want to do. And we, we do this integral over uh, this closed uh, contour. And it's really a Riemann integral. That means uh, we, we, we calculate this over small distance, calculate this derivative, and add up everything. And we go around uh, once. And then the goal is to show that this is actually non-vanishing. And to do that, uh, you, you first have to, to uh, so that's integral over C, uh, dd tor of minus uh, gamma mu uh, rho. Uh, in fact, I, I changed my, I have to keep the, uh, my, my so I, I call this uh, new. Gamma new, this is new, so that's new, that should be new. Times dx sigma uh, d tau times uh, v uh, rho. And I have to make sure that I, I forgot here. So this is sigma. So that's sigma, that's dx sigma, and here there is gamma sigma. So this is the thing I have to calculate, and the minus sign is in front of uh, here. And the way uh, you calculate that is by doing a Taylor expansion, because this uh, depends on x of tau, x alpha of tau, and also this uh, depends on x alpha of tau. That means we, we tailor expand this around uh, this point. So th this is equal to gamma uh, nu rho sigma at uh, zero plus a, a uh, derivative, and I called uh, this uh, derivative uh, d alpha gamma uh, nu uh, rho sigma. That's the alpha derivative times uh, x alpha. So, so this would be x alpha. And x alpha is small. So we I only keep uh, the first term. That's this term times dx sigma uh, d tau. And here we again Taylor expand that. So this is this factor at zero plus the derivative of this factor. And I use the index in this case d mu v rho evaluated at zero times uh, x mu. 
So I do a Taylor expansion. Then, if you look at the first term, the first term, it, it is actually zero. And it is zero because we have the, the integral of a d tau of d x sigma uh, d tau. Because this doesn't depend on tau, this doesn't depend on tau. Uh, and, and this integral is an integral over a total derivative. So this is equal to zero. The terms quadratic in x mu uh, we can neglect because x mu is small. So we are only left with the terms linear in x mu. And there are two of them, and we have to keep uh, those. So there's this one, uh, this one, and this derivative, and this derivative, uh, this one, and that. So, the in, so we have to calculate the integral over those two terms. I think that's something we'll have to take the next time. Yeah, so, so it, 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 it is some work. You have to work out the derivatives. And in the end, uh, you find an expression with exactly the Riemann tensor. And you actually could use this as a definition of the Riemann tensor, which actually is done in some, some books. Well, I don't think just uh, the equation that we have right now. Do you see that the product of these two uh, gives a vanishing integral? So we, we just work, write it out. So it's in, we can do that term. Integral over d tau. Then here there is a gamma a nu a rho sigma at a zero. Then we have d x sigma a d tau a times v rho of a zero. We have to always check uh, the indices. So this one cancels against that. So, so this has only a new index, and here we also had only a new index. So this is uh, the first term. This doesn't depend on x. x is equal to 0. So this is gamma nu rho sigma at 0 times v rho at uh, 0 times integral uh, d tau times dx sigma uh, d tau. And, and what do we, do we mean uh, by this uh, integral? What we mean is, uh, so, say, is if, so it, say, say this point is tau equal to zero, then you go around, and, and then you end up with uh, tau equal to one here. So what this is, this integral is the integral from zero to one, uh, d tau, dx sigma, uh, d tau. And this is just x sigma of 1 minus x sigma of uh, 0. And you know what this is? We, we looked at the curve. Uh, so, so this was our curve. So here there's tau equal to 0. Here tau is 0 0.1. Here tau is 0 0.2. Here tau is 0 0.9. Wait, so 0 and 1 that represent the beginning and the end of our form. Yeah. So yeah. they're the exact same. Exactly, exactly. So what's your conclusion? It's 0. Exactly. This integral is 0. And that is why this term uh, does not contribute uh, to the change uh, to, to this integral. So the only terms that contribute are uh, the product of this times that and this times that. And the product of these two do not contribute because this is x alpha is taken infinitesimal. So let's say uh, a million. If this is one over a million and this is uh, one over a million, 
then uh, the product is probably one over a trillion. I study uh, this page of my notes, page 70. Uh, you, you can look it up. It is, uh, this is a starting point. Look at uh, uh, these two terms, what happens to it, and how you prove uh, that, uh, how you can rewrite them. I'll make sure to uh, look at the lecture notes. And in the end, you, you, get an, you can also rewrite this in terms of Christoffel symbols. So in the end, uh, you, you, you get an expression in terms of Christoffel symbols. And, and that expression is actually the Riemann tensor. So this is an intuitive way of getting uh, the, the Riemann tensor. You can also get from the commutation of two covariant derivatives, but that's much less intuitive. That's more abstract. And here you actually see exactly where it comes from. All right, so I'll try studying uh, the derivation of the Riemann tensor from your lecture notes. And uh, next time, I'll hopefully have a better understanding of how it works. Yeah. You just try to uh, derive it line by line. The, the, the lines might not always be equally clear in my notes.